Hi everyone, my name is Trevor Jones and welcome back to the Astro Backyard. Tonight I'm going to take a picture of the incredible Cygnus Wall and explain why I think you should give it a try too. It's a Friday night, it's a full moon, and I am back on my feet again. So please join me for another night of astrophotography in the backyard as we capture one of the most intense nebulae in the night sky. If you have a telescope, any telescope, you should point it towards the Cygnus wall. It's a bit early to go after this one in May, but it's a summer target and it will be out all night long. You may have heard of the North America Nebula in Cygnus before, and the wall is its most prominent feature. In late spring and early summer, look to the northeast and you should see the bright stars Vega and Deneb. Deneb is the brightest star in Cygnus, and the Cygnus wall is not far underneath it. If you're looking at this nebula visually through a telescope, it might just look like a lot of stars, especially if you're in the city. The North American Nebula has been observed for a long time. Early astronomers noticed a faint milky nebulous region in Cygnus, with the Cygnus wall being the brightest portion of it. A telescope with a nice wide field of view will reveal a foggy patch of light under dark skies, but I have to admit I've never seen it myself through the eyepiece of a telescope. Through long exposure photography, however, we can reveal the entire shape of the North American Nebula with the Cygnus wall and even the nearby Pelican Nebula. This is a great target for astrophotographers of all skill levels because it is so bright, the Cygnus wall portion specifically, that it can be picked up in an off-the-shelf DSLR camera. Now, you wouldn't normally want to go after it on a full moon like I am tonight, but that's where my filters come in. I'll use specialized filters that will cut out all the moonlight and light pollution and only allow the light emitted by this emission nebula to shine through. Let me show you the equipment I'm using to take this shot. This is a great wide field telescope setup for large nebulae. The telescope shoots at a focal length of only 400 millimeter, which is really low magnification in the telescope world. Here's how big the moon looks in this scope, just for reference. The dedicated astronomy camera attached to the back of the telescope captures images in black and white, but they're super high resolution. I'll create a full color image by shooting through three separate filters with this camera. The filters I'm using are the same ones like the Hubble Space Telescope uses to produce epic images like this. For all the gear nerds out there, all the specifics of this kit are in the description. Astrophotography during a full moon is kind of bittersweet. The bright moonlight washes out the night sky and it really limits the types of targets you can shoot, but it also takes the pressure off the expectations you have during a rare, clear moonless night. You're free to kind of experiment, try out some new filters, and anything you get is a bonus. If you want to capture the full moon, which I am doing in the background, or if you're photographing planets, a full moon night is not a problem. You can also actually see what you're doing out here in the dark with a full moon. It's amazing how much it brightens the landscape at night. We're coming up to the best time of year for astronomy and using your telescope, whether you're looking through the eyepiece visually or you've got your camera running. The nights are shorter, yes, but they're also warmer and more enjoyable to spend outside. The Milky Way core is coming back, and by June, we're in nebula heaven. Some of my favorite early start projects in May are the Crescent Nebula in Cygnus and even the Eagle Nebula in Serpens if you're up late enough.
my camera and telescope are now taking photos of the Cygnus wall. These are four minute exposures. What you're seeing is the H alpha filter right now. Look at that intense hydrogen gas. It looks like we're coming up on the S2 filter in about seven seconds, but look at the depth and, and how dynamic this ridge, the Cygnus wall looks. Let's see what that S2 looks like. Much less pronounced, but that's those are going to be very important details to map to the red channel in the image. So when you see my final image, you'll see this ridge of red, and that's the S2 gas, the sulfur. Okay, now we have our images, our narrow band images, three filters, three different views of the same nebula to highlight specific gases. To make a color image using the same palette that the Hubble Space Telescope uses, we'll map these black and white images into color channels. And watch how incredible this is. Okay, we've got our base here. We'll start with the O3 and put that into our blue channel. Now we'll grab the HA, put that in the green channel, and then finally the S2 and put that in the red channel. Now if we look at it in RGB, we have this full color image, this false color image that looks nothing how it does in the visible spectrum with the naked eye or even just a broadband photo. But this color mapping using these narrowband filters has a way of creating a really dynamic image that separates those gases. Now that we have our base, it's time for a good old fashioned Astro Backyard reveal. On April 10th, I fell hard. It was one of those fluke things. Long story short, I ended up in the ER with broken ribs and a punctured lung. Being taken out like that was awful. The worst part was feeling like I let you guys down, just not being here. So I have some advice for you guys. Don't take your health or the activities that make you happy for granted. If you've been dragging your feet about astrophotography this year, get out there when you can. You only get so many chances.